So I'd like to call the meeting to, uh, to order, Judy. I think we need everybody to mute. Yeah. Getting some feedback. Judy, if you could um, do the call, please. Yes. You're muted, Judy. I'm off. I should, I'm off. There you go. You're good. Okay. Uh, Neil Botnick. Here. Neville. Tom Schulte. Here. Amy Carroll. George here. Blavelt. You're, here. You're here. George Blavelt. Here. Barry. Here. Chris Free. Here. Yeah, good. Uh, Michael Chen. Here. Mar Maria Weingarten. Here. And Robert Hamill. Here. All present. And Kevin, is Kevin our first selectman with us? Yes, he is. Okay, all yeah. present. Kevin, over to you uh, for uh, election. Okay, it's my pleasure to uh, conduct our annual election of officers and I'd first like to take nominations for chairman. Mm -hmm. I would, I would like to nominate our current chairman, Mr. Laverie. <laughs> George, George. Second. Nominate, are we second? Michael second. Ken? I second. It sounds like everybody's seconding. <laughs> I got Chen, for the record. Okay, and uh, I have any further nominations for chairman? If not, are you all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not breaking a tie, but anyway, that's unanimous. Looks like to me, Tucker. Tucker, congratulations, Todd, and thank you. Thank you. And, thank you. and I'll take nominations for secretary. Well, I'll nominate uh, Judy Neville. Oh, I'll second that. Well, I'll second that. We're <laughs> <laughs> all bad. Absolutely, you're here. I think you all had, your friends. I think you had Neil for a uh, second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. Aye. Okay, you have you have officers for 2021. Hey. hey. Thanks, Kevin. And thank I would you also like to thank everybody for your service. I mean, this is a terrific board, and I really uh, I'm thrilled that we have a terrific chairman and 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 such great members. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Kevin. And the training wheels are off because Bob Spangler's not here, so uh, <laughs> we're, we're on our own. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. I appreciate the support, but more importantly, everything you do on this board all year long, um, greatly appreciated. So I do need a motion to approve the minutes from November 10th. Move. Uh, Neil, second? Second. Amy, okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. Okay, so moved. Okay, uh, before we get over to uh, Vanguard and the investment performance, uh, Kevin, could you um, give us the update? I know there's a lot going on right now in town with everything that's happening. With sure. Um, did I just go mute? Oh, we can hear you. You can hear me? Okay, on the COVID front, as you may have heard the outcall last night, New Canaan seems to be doing relatively well in comparison to the rest of Connecticut. Um, We've done, been doing community testing six days a week at the Lapham Center with, uh, through, through the graces and courtesy of Waving the Life Care Network. And we only had six uh, positive results out of, I think, almost 400 tested last week. And uh, the superintendent uh, stood up position one again to do testing of, I think, 501 uh, teachers and students, about two thirds of them teachers from all the schools, not, not just Saxon in the high school. And there were only two positive cases out of that, which was quite surprising. The state of Connecticut actually as yesterday was at 6.6% 6 .6 positivity, but jumped today to 8.65. And that's quite a jump in, in one day. It's the, it's the seven day rolling average and the governor, I watched the governor's press conference last night and uh, it was quite interesting because on the one hand, he's, he's focusing mainly on the hospital uh, uh, census and um, this, this hospital census, especially in places like Yale and New Haven, are, are rising great, greatly. And that's probably his biggest concern about whether there's a need to lock down uh, things further. He had a, a doctor from uh, Yale Medical School as his guest. And every time she got on, she said, I, I recommend to the governor he close the restaurants. And um, I think that may be coming. Uh, 
He said he would do it only on a regional basis with the other states, our surrounding states. So uh, COVID is obviously um, very much prevalent throughout Connecticut and our neighboring towns and to some extent in New Canaan. Um, we're gonna continue the waving the care testing uh, weekly. Uh, we rep roll our first responders into that so that they can go any day of the week as, as needed. And um, let's see what else we, um, town hall has gone to cohorting um, so that we uh, are lowering the risk of, of employee town employees uh, getting infected at work. And we are encouraging as much as possible residents to do business electronically and uh, uh, by telephone and, and by the internet. So that uh, uh, then next, um, the, the other day, so the superintendent and I signed the PPAs for Saks and West Solar and uh, that will uh, begin to be installed. The roofs are ready for both and uh, the estimated savings there again are 1.36 million over the next 20 years. So that's, and the, the pricing we got on the rebidding was, was very attractive compared to what we had before. So um, uh, the, the CHP project at Saks and the, the boiler are, are in motion. For the boiler especially, we're gonna go out for a uh, RFP soon for the uh, CHP. And um, as I mentioned last month, I, I, we are now very close to signing it having a lease sign for a cell tower in the Northwest corner of town. The town will be a uh, co-tenant with uh, the tower company to bring it to the siting council. Um, and um, the police department building committee, um, I hope to have a meeting, first meeting next week. Um, and uh, we've been working with the department managers to, to prepare their budget requests that are due by Friday. And I will make an announcement here that um, now that it's official, um, Bowtie Cinemas has given us notice that they plan to terminate their lease in town. And uh, we will begin to look for alternative arrangements for a, an operator for that facility. Um, I think we're, we're, we're all committed to maintaining a movie theater in the town. So that's what I have. I'd be happy to answer questions. Hey, Kevin, can, can you remind me, what, what's the status of uh the roof work on the movie theater. We, we postponed it since postponed uh, it. Okay. We, we postponed it figuring we'd like to put solar on there because since we own the property and the contiguous property, we can take the benefit of, of solar onto mm -hmm. the, both the tall town hall annex and into the, so it would make sense to do that. But we, we, we deferred to at least next spring or summer, the, uh, the roof. Okay. And, and also I just like to say, I, I went through the waving the testing. It was so well organized. It was so efficient. I was just, everyone who was involved with it just did a great job. So I just wanted to get a shout out to the people who did the testing. Thank you. And again, the Waving Care Center is being great to us to, to do this for us, but you don't have to go and wait in lines or in other other testing sites. So it's, uh, but again, it's, it's kind of remarkable the results we're having, but uh, every week we're having 30, 40, 50 cases pop up mainly through, uh, through small events through, through uh, people that come and work uh, by, as babysitters or nannies. And, uh, but I think New, uh, New Canaan residents have, you know, understand how important it is to wear masks and to, uh, to if, especially for the seniors, to, to stay isolated and protect themselves. I think the next month is going to get pretty rough. Kevin, what's the charge for the test? It's actually paid for by insurance, the lab fee. We're paying, we're paying our way to the care center $3,000 a week. But uh, the, the lab fee will be paid by insurance. I should say the town is paying three thousand dollars a week. So uh, whereas the uh, physician one was ninety dollars a test, and uh, that is um, since teachers and, and town employees are self we self insure, we're effectively paying for that by insurance when we uh, when we do it for town employees. But and the superintendent does it for teachers and staff. Uh, so okay. Hey, um, uh, Todd, if I might, yeah, Kevin, just a quick question. Have you received any notification about, or do you otherwise have reason to believe that the town would have any role in distributing warehousing or administering a vaccine? The vaccine. Well, there's a whole plan about vaccine and, um, it's the, the state's directing how it's all going to work, but 
the, the I understand the Pfizer product will be only given in hospitals because of the requirement for the the uh, freezing equipment. But otherwise, I understand CVS is going to have a contract to do uh, to do not only senior facilities, but uh, so the, the, it's it's being contracted out initially by the state to uh, to large providers. When, when will we know the answer to that? I, I have actually heard that CVS and Walgreens nationally are going to be responsible for something like 70% of the but vaccination. I, I read that they're hiring 9,000 people. At CVS, yeah. So yeah. it's largely going to be on a mass, a mass distribution basis through yeah. large providers. But the hospitals are, will be a big factor for. But do you know when that will be communicated, those, those details? I think it, it's, it's a test. Uh, vaccination is starting next week, they expect. So. The details, um, state, I'm sure will. They've been given pieces of it, as to, but it's, it'll be fairly official next week. Is okay. more detail. Okay. Other questions for Kevin? And and uh, Linda can later address the COVID reimbursements we received. I think that's on his agenda. Yeah, we'll talk about that then. Okay. That's a teaser. It's going to keep everybody in on the meeting now. You're going to keep everybody here for the. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else, let's move on. Uh, thanks, Kevin. I appreciate that. So let's talk through the um, the Vanguard uh, presentation. Yeah. Okay. Today, today yeah, Brian. You, that's Brian Binkley. Today, you're hearing the Vanguard presentation. Uh, RPAC met today, and they've also listened to Brian's presentation. And Hooker and Holcomb will come with the actual report in January. Yep discussions on it now, but uh, we're not done yet. Just us putting everything in perspective. Okay. We'll leave it to Brian for the rest. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Neil, and thank you, everyone. Uh, and good to see everyone virtually. I'm glad New Canaan's holding in there better than some other towns and continue to uh, wish good health uh, for everyone here. Uh, Diane, will you be driving the presentation or does everyone have it to follow along? Yes, it's on everybody's tablets. Yeah, we it's all on. have it. Um, Perfect. Yeah. All right. So it's a it's a large presentation. I assure you, I'm not going page by page. Uh, the really to cover what we're going to cover this evening is uh, just a recap of the markets, the performance of all three plans, and just a, a quick update as far as where our outlook is. And I'll, I'll pause. If there's questions, I'll be glad to take them as as we go. And I'm going to start on page four, which is just looking, just recapping kind of where we've been. It's been a whirlwind on so many different levels. And just looking at that top part of page four is, as a reminder, this, this crisis that we had the beginning of this year uh, was the fastest bear market that we had on record. It hasn't been the longest. And that's that short steep red line, solid line in the far left of the page. And the other teal and blue lines are the uh, previous large crises we had in 08 and 2000. So you could see the magnitude of how quickly the bear market happened in the financial markets. However, the rebound has been exceptionally strong as well since the March 23rd bottom. And then that's that dotted red line. And that's come back. And now markets, as reflected on the bottom of this page, the global equities, global bonds, you could see how much they plunged in the first part of the year. But as of the third quarter, uh, global equities and global bonds are positive. So the message here is the town is, and the committees re, uh, remained very disciplined in sticking to our long-term targets. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit later that we've done some rebalancing. And so our, our plan as of last night's close, you know, we're up from where we were a year ago as far as an asset value. And part of that, again, comes down to that discipline. So if we go to the next page on page five, I'm saying that was on this previous page I was talking about globally. This is just a quick look on the left-hand side. I'll focus on the teal bar, the year-to-date numbers. So US stocks have, as far as the equities have concerned, have done exceptionally well, they're up over 3%. That's really been led by a few big names that you're familiar with, the Google, Facebook, the Teslas, um, and therefore non-US stocks uh, have lagged, have continued to lag. And so on a year-to-date basis, non-US stocks are down over 7%. 
We hold a globally diversified portfolio in all three of the plans, the pension, the OPEB, and the Marsley Trust. Uh, and I think that's the prudent right approach, but it's U.S. stocks that have done well this year. Uh, but outshining all of the equities on the middle of the page is fixed income. So U.S. bonds, you could see, are up over 6.5%. That's a meaningful portion of the plans. Uh, that's as a result of falling interest rates. And so interest rates have fallen over 100 basis points this year, and that benefits fixed income investors. And therefore, that has been the bright spot. Page six, this breaks out the equity performance in a little bit more granular. And really, I'll just elaborate on the comment I made on the prior page. There's been a big disparity <clears throat> between growth and value. Think of growth stocks as your technology and value stocks more of your energy or financials. And you could see on a year-to-date basis, growth stocks are over, up over 19%, value down 13%. And then last slide as far as the market recap is page seven. And this shows the yield curve or the interest rate across different time horizons the gray line is where we were a year ago. And so you, we all know that the Federal Reserve has cut rates to int you know, interest rates to zero. The green line is where we are, or the solid blue line is where we are as, as of the end of October. And some of those rates, or most of those rates are below 1% or even close to zero. And I bring that up because that has implications as we look forward to returns uh, and harder to hit return targets with fixed income yields so low. So let me turn to page eight now and just we'll start to look at the performance of the actual plans on page eight. So on a year to date basis, uh, the total pension plan is returned 2.99%. So it's, it's, it's certainly a recovery from where we were in the beginning of the year at 152 million. You know, at, at the bottom of the market, at the end of March, those asset values were hovering at around one. 129 million. So you could see that that recovery. It's uh, slightly above its composite benchmark. And the comment there is, you know, how is a portfolio above its benchmark when it's all indexed? And that's because we've done some rebalancing as a, as a result of the big moves in the market. So in March, we set thresholds around the equities and fixed income. You see the policy targets towards the bottom of page eight we set a, a band of plus or minus 5% at the equity and fixed income level. And as you imagine, equities fell in March and they fell lower than that 5% target. So therefore we sold fixed income back in March and purchased equities. It was just coincidence, but it was, so that's a part of discipline and being rebalancing. And so that, um, that addition back in March helped the overall returns and why you would expect it or why it is leading high return over the composite benchmark. This performance is as of uh, end of October. And you see that we're, we were very close to the policy targets, but equity, equities continued to do really well in November. So the opposite happened. Equities got overweight by over 5%. We, we trimmed our equities back to target and purchased fixed income. So we had two of those moves this year. And that is keeping us from a risk perspective close to our investment objectives and investment policy targets. The last point I'll major, make on page eight is uh, first, thank you. I mean, you could see on the inception date, the far right, that's as of December 02. So coming up on 18 years with the town as far as an advisory capacity. So thank you for the trust that you've put in Vanguard. And you'll see in that inception to date number, of 7.54% on an absolute basis. Uh, that certainly exceeds you know, some of the rate of return targets we have of 6.75. We're always focused on the long term. And I think that's been a very strong absolute return for the pension plan. Page nine is just looking at the funds that make up the investments for the pension plan. And there's only three funds, the total stock market index, the total international stock market index, and the total bond market index. So we've embraced uh, inv 
investing across all asset classes. And while there are only three funds, these are extremely well diversified. Total stock market index holds over 3,500 securities. So it's mid cap, large cap, small cap stocks. International stock market index is over 7,000 securities. And that's both developed and emerging markets. And then same with the total bond market, that's government, in, government securities as well as corporate bonds. So while you only see three funds, it's extremely well uh, diversified portfolio. And as you'd expect, low cost from those three fund index funds. Page 10 is just looking at the OPEB. And my comments would were just mirror what I talked about on the pension side because the asset allocation is the same. So the only difference that you would see in return, which is very nominal, is because of only any difference that happens with cash flows in and out of the plans. So uh, no additional comments on, on the OPEB from a performance perspective. And then that brings us to the Marsley Trust on page 12. The Marsley Trust uh, has a return of 2.19%. And that's a little bit lower than the pension and the OPEB, but there's a different asset allocation here. It's the same, excuse me, same three funds but there's a slightly higher equity allocation by about 2%, 2.5%. And therefore that is why the returns are a little bit different. Uh, so a little bit more equity risk here, um, but not material. And that would explain the difference in returns between the Marsley Trust versus the two other funds. Uh, also, Paul's, you know, you see the current allocation versus the policy indices and that's very, that's been very close. So I'm going to I'm going to pause here because I was going to wrap it up just looking out, you know, forward. But any questions on performance, asset allocation or any anything any actions we've taken this year? Any questions anyone? Okay. I think you're Not hearing any, but you can jump in at any point. I want to jump towards the back of the book. There's a lot of additional slides in here because of the RPAC and Vanguard have been having discussions about asset allocation and looking at different scenarios given the low returns from the fixed income markets. Um, no decision, you know, these are continuing dialogue. So I'm not going to spend any time on those slides and just wrap up on page 42, which is just our outlook for, uh, for the economy. Uh, the big takeaway, there's been a lot of discussion, of course, on COVID, even in this meeting. And really, we feel like the economic recovery is really what's happening with COVID. And so therefore, you know, our forecast as we look out is now that we've recently heard about vaccines, we do think that there's a chance that the US economy reaches the pre-COVID output levels before the end of next year. Prior, when we had less certainty about that, we thought it would be well into 2022. Uh, but that, you know, most of that recovery has happened already. Uh, so the recovery would be a little bit slower from this point on. Related to that is we have pretty good clarity from the Federal Reserve of them keeping interest rates low in therefore, because there's a lot of slack in the economy with high unemployment and Federal Reserve's keeping rates low at least until 2023 as of right now. Uh, therefore, we also think inflation will be contained. And while you might see inflation pick up a little bit with any kind of recovery, we do think that'll stay below 2%, the Fed's 2% target, uh, at least in the short to medium term. And then I'll leave it on, what does it have to do with our return projections looking out the next 10 years? Uh, while still positive in the equity markets, uh, a little bit more muted because of the gains that the equity markets have had the last 10 years, which have actually been quite strong. So we've pulled a lot of returns forward the last 10 years. So therefore, U.S. equity returns somewhere in the 4.7% range over the next 10 years. We do have a higher forecast for international equities, given that valuations are not as expensive overseas. And so at the bottom of the page 42, you see global equities more in the range of 8%. And 
And then the right hand side, I touched upon this in the beginning, just expecting very muted returns from fixed income, given where yields are and bond prices. And so um, all pension plans alike, corporates, publics, are, uh, are wrestling with uh, their return targets right now. And you know what that means for the future. Uh, I, had a, I, had a, I had a question, it's Bob Hamill. Um, on the asset allocation side, yes. uh, I was looking through your slides and uh, and I, I don't know if any other towns uh, or any of your other clients in our position would ever consider commodities, but they uh, obviously have been a big laggard for the last decade and, and are, are relatively uncorrelated to, to uh, stocks and bonds, which is what we're invested in. And I'm um, just curious, you guys have a have a projected low return in that asset class. Um, not sure how you come up with that, but it's it's at least a potential diversifier. And and, right. and if if inflation were to raise its head, I know you're not looking for it. Uh, it might serve us well. And I'm just curious if any other towns stray from sort of the asset allocation that we've got here, and whether commodities are uh, at all in consideration anywhere. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Bob. So certainly some public plans, I'd say more, maybe perhaps at the state level, will you'll see an allocation to commodities. Our just broad view as the commodities as an asset class is it certainly acts as their diversifier, but over periods of time, they do introduce a lot of volatility into any kind of, any kind of plan. So it's just weighing the benefits of that diversification for the added volatility that it, that it brings. Um, they do, they are one of the best inflation hedges out there, commodities, you know, more so than REITs uh, or other, or even tips. However, in order to get the benefit, you have to add a sizable portion to, you know, in the portfolio to benefit from that inflation protection. So given that we have a long time horizon as a, as a public plan, you know, so let's say 30 years out, and we're looking at that long-term forecast, you know, equities over a longer period of times do a great job of infl uh, hedging inflation, not as much in the short term, but over long terms. And therefore that's why, you know, I or Vanguard hasn't come to the committee to introduce commodities into the plan. Thank you, that's, that's thoughtful, thank you. Thanks, Bob. Hey, Brian. It's yes, uh, Michael. Michael. So uh, you guys, uh, obviously, Vanguard's got a great reputation, done a great job uh, since inception over 18 years. And I saw those returns. I just want to confirm, you have very low fees. Are those returns before your low fees or net of your fees that you've shown in the previous charts? Yeah, so it, it should. Let me go back there, Mike, Michael. And you'll actually, if you were to go back to page eight, and it's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I'll give the committee a point, a, a moment to get back to that page eight. We list both is the answer. So on page, I know it's a lot to scroll back to. I'll, I'll give it a moment. I'll start to, to speak to it. Uh, so on page eight, if we were looking at <clears throat> The uh, let's say look at the ten-year number, or let's look at the year-to-date number. The first line it says 2.99 percent. That's the that's the gross return that the plan has achieved year-to-date. The next line down says Town of New Canaan net. That is net of Vanguard's advisory fees uh, to serve as the investment advisor. So net it's 2.95 percent. Any of the mutual fund expenses that just comes out of the returns of the funds themselves. So we list both of those returns there, Michael, as far as the gross and net fees after Vanguard. And um, you could see that equates to, you know, about four basis points from an advisory fee. Okay, I don't see it on that chart, but that's great. Oh, not, not on the- Oh, here it is. Yeah, not on the chart, but on the, the actual performance lines at the very top of page eight. There you are. Oh, there. Okay, yeah. Now so 2.99, so the year to date, that's gross of all fees, or then the net, the 2.95, that's net of Vanguard's advisory fees 
and then your composite benchmark is 2.47, and that's made of the, the indices that you see right below that, total stock market index, the Barclays Ag, et cetera. Yeah, got it, that's great. Mm -hmm. And, and I, the second question I have, Brian, I did a quick math in my head, but based on your projections for equities, US and international equities, and for the fixed income, you're projecting with our mix, right? That we have currently the 40% US equities, 20% international, about 30% bonds. You're projecting much, about a 5% or less, maybe four and a half to 5% range for our return based on our mix. Is that correct? That's what I have, about four and a half is actually I have. So over, over a 30 year period in, on, with the current mix, we're projecting a median return of 6.19. That's on page uh, 22. We always look at forecasts in a range. That's the midpoint. So we're looking at a range of the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile around that median of 6.89 to 5.53. So the town's return target of 6.75 currently falls within that band and we, we think is still reasonable. Uh, given where we are, the 10-year projections, you know, much shorter time frame, that would be that would be lower. But usually, right. for setting the expected rate of return for the pension plan or the OPEB, we're looking at a 30-year projection. I got it. Okay, because when you show the latest market projection with 10 years, it turned out the math comes yeah. in a lot lower than six and a half percent. You're right, and your numbers are, are are right there, Michael. So you're right. If you went to page 25, that's a 10-year return God. of and that's 4.74 there you go right that's what i came up with okay yes but you're, you're comfortable that even though you're projecting the 10 years be 4.74 that if we have a plan in the six percent range that that's not unreasonable if you look at a 30-year projection for the the planning for the pensions yeah tip, typically publics and corporates alike are, are using uh 30 year sometimes 20 but usually no shorter than that for setting long-term return expectations. Okay. And and over time, Brian, if we were to go back and, and ask for this, is this a Monte Carlo simulation? Is that is that how you get the percentages and the distributions? It is. We yeah. we uh, each quarter we mm -hmm. do a capital market forecast for all of the major asset classes, and you know looking at the return. Yeah. the risk and the correlation amongst those a asset classes right. is so kind of Bob alluded to. Right. So if we were to if we were to go back, say, maybe three years ago and look at that year's um, mm -hmm. asset allocation, 30 year projections, would we see the same kind of, um, of probabilities against interest rates or would we see higher interest rates or would there be any significant difference between the, the two? Uh, I would think it would be safe to say, I don't know the magnitude, but if we that when we did this three years ago or looked at this three years ago, that those numbers would be higher than where we are right now. Right. Okay. Uh, so projections have been coming down. Plans have been lowering their expected rate of return and uh, you yeah. wouldn't be unique there. Okay. Thanks. Uh, you know, it was very easy to get much more yield from fixed income. That's a big component, right? Yeah. Uh, but also the equities. And equities have done exceptionally well yeah. since that 09 timeframe mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. result of low interest rates. And so right. factoring both of those in is, is what leads to more muted returns. Right, right. Uh, and, and that, I mean, that, that's just how the math works. When, when, when inflation is high, bonds don't do so very well and equities do great. Mm -hmm. and, but in this instance, over the past several years, we've had practically no inflation, but we've had huge right. amounts of liquidity in the markets. So uh, asset prices have, have gone up and bonds have been penalized. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're right. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, George. Okay, any other questions from the board for Brian? Uh, I have a question, uh, but not for Brian, but for Neil. Neil, you said what we're gonna have in January in our January meeting, we'll have the update on the pension Will that be through year-end uh, results, um, stock market returns and overall returns through year-end or through November? What will they have uh, factored in for that January presentation? Do you know? Did we lose Neil? Probably mute, right? He's muted. Oh, Neil, yeah, you're on mute. 
Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Tucker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, I have to go back and look. Okay. 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 Any other questions for Brian? Thank you, Brian. That was terrific. Appreciate it. Thank you for all the, the questions and enjoy the holiday season. And of course, most of all, stay safe. Same. Yep. Thank you. Same to you. Bye. Bye, Thank everyone. you very much. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Linda, over to you for the audit committee report. We've got it on our tablets. It's the three pages. Uh, are you presenting that? I know that um, that uh, Bill was on, but he had to step away. I don't know if you're covering Jeff it. Jeff Jacobson yes. is on as well. Oh, okay. Chuck is on as well. Oh, um, hey, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go over the the numbers, and then I'll let Chuck um, discuss the overall. Okay. Um, give some perspective from from the audit committee. So let okay. me share my screen here. Perfect. You have some work to do on your emails there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a busy man. Oversharing. I appreciate uh, all Can you see my open. screen? We can. Okay. Perfect. Oh, we can see your your folder. Are you seeing my folder or my email? Uh, my um, presentation. No, you have to open it up, Linda. Oh, okay. I have it open on my end. So yeah, you got to uh, stop sharing. Share again. Yeah. Okay. Stop sharing and then reshare. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. I'll briefly go over the audit, talk about the, the backgrounds, and then I'll just share some couple of numbers that I think um, are relevant to, to this meeting. And then, like I said, I'll toss it over to Chuck. So this is part of our annual audit process. Uh, the scope, obviously, they re review all of our internal controls. They review um, the appropriateness of, of policies that we have together. They look at the overall presentation of our financial statements. Uh, they review the management discussion and analysis that that you also be you also be receiving as part of the overall um, audit. Um, and then they also provide recommendations for how we could improve our overall financial controls and processes. So start with the most important thing first, uh, their audit opinion. Uh, they issued an unmodified clean opinion on the town finances, um, which is what we've received um, over the last couple of years as of June 30th. And so that is uh, what we strive to achieve um, with our financials on an annual basis. They did offer us some recommendations. Um, at the conclusion, you recall that this was a budget, uh, this was an audit that we did uh, during the COVID period. So there was a lot of information that we shared with them. Some we shared early before we had totally closed out, closed out the books, which is not typical for when um, they would be here physically. Um, and so among their recommendations was uh, for the town to continue to work on improving our monthly year end closing and reconciling um, our bank at the end of the month. Uh, we do have a process in place now uh, for doing that with the addition of our new uh, financial analyst. Uh, we are now closing at the end of, of every month and we'll be reporting uh, back to you. They did uh, recommend that we continue to enhance how we report on our capital assets. You recall that last year we presented to you a plan to move our fixed assets to Munis, um, but we were we've already started the implementation process, but then obviously COVID hit and therefore we were delayed in getting that implemented in this fiscal year. So we've postponed that to next fiscal year. So this fiscal year, we continued to um, account for capital assets using our third party vendor asset works, uh, but the plan is to move it all in house, which was, which was their recommendation the year before. Um, and so we're well underway in doing that. They did recommend segregating of duties between our accounts payable uh, func uh, functions, uh, which we are doing. They asked us to continue to review our authorized but unissued projects, which we do currently. One of the things that they recommended is if somewhere along the way we end up funding a project by cash, uh, even though we had initially intended to bond it, 
we should bring back those resolutions to the Board of Finance and to the Town Council so that those authorizations are rescinded uh, once that um, once we've made the decision to not bond for those projects. And then the last one is action that you've already taken. They did recommend that we create a separate sewer capital budget account for the pay as you go for the non-bonded sewer projects. Currently, those have been in our sewer fund. And um, I believe it was in July, we brought this to you and we've created those for that fund. And this fiscal year, we're moving those expenses into that fund. Uh, they also look at some recommendations from the prior year. Uh, they said that um, our, they had re recommended that we uh, account for our enterprise fund, which is mainly the pool fund, using the proper basis of accounting, which we've done this year. They asked us to implement the purchasing policy, which was approved uh, by the Board of Selectmen in July of 2020. Um, and then they've also asked us to continue to uh, review all the inner fund transfers between the general fund, uh, which we do. A good example is the 1.5 million transfer that we did for the Board of Ed uh, for the COVID non-lapsing, and then the transfer that we did before that for the 400. So those are the types of things that um, they like us to continue to do to just have the practice of uh, providing that information to you. So now I'd like to share just some, some numbers just to kind of see uh, where we are um, town Government-wide, uh, so this is looking at the overall picture of the town. This includes all funds, capital funds, uh, the fiduciary funds that we were just uh, talking about with, with Brian. And therefore, uh, year-end, the total governmental net position, this FY20 column is 197 uh, million, includes all the funds that are under, under your purview. They break it down between governmental activities, which are the primary government, business type activities. These are primarily our enterprise funds. Um, and then at the bottom, I just combine everything together. So you'll see that over time, um, there is that increase in the town's net position. And we ended this year at, at 197,000. Mm -hmm. The chart right below that is just um, looking at what makes up that, the kind of the ins and the outs, government-wide looking at everything. So these are all the program revenues all of the taxes, all of our incomes from the various sources. So in FY20, the town in general had an overall revenues of 171 million. This includes you know, bond proceeds, uh, all of the enterprises uh, that the government is engaged in. And then our expenses broken down by functional area, we had a total expense of 165 million uh, for the year. So you'll notice here, for example, public works, this number of 19 million in FY20. Public Works also includes any of the capital, the bridges, all of those capital projects, all of those expenses are included. So this is looking at all the expenses of the town and therefore for the, this fiscal year, we had 165, a little over 165. And then below is just the annual year over year changes um, overall in net position. The other chart I wanted to share with you is just looking at our overall outstanding debt between bonds and notes. Um, and again, we do the same thing. Uh, we look at governmental activities, business type activities, primarily this is the, the pool fund, and then just adding everything together. So in overall, the total outstanding bonds and notes are at 107 million as of June 30th. As you know, we continue to pay these things down as we go throughout the year um, of this. 424,000 is the balance of standing on the pool bonds. This is of June 30th. This year we're paying down 211,000 and this one gets paid off um, the following fiscal year and that will be down, down to zero. So that's kind of where we stand overall in terms of the outstanding debt. And then the last chart I wanted to show in relation to this was the um, fund balance overall fund balance of all of the town funds. Now this does not include the, um, the fiduciary, the, the, the investments that we just referred to. So these are just the governmental activities and then the proprietary funds. So of interest here, obviously this is the general fund unassigned uh, fund balance. And so you can see where we are this year, we pretty much stayed flat year over year. Uh, the, unass the assigned fund balance um, increased slightly. You recall that this year 
we took on at the end of the year that we were going to hold that Board of Ed uh, internal service for the health. We were going to hold that so that they don't have to contribute into it. So that increased um, a portion of our honest, of our assigned fund balance. And then these are just all the other funds, our capital fund and so forth. So total governmental funds, uh, we have about 57 million up from the 52. Now this also includes every time we issue bonds, when we get those bond proceeds, before we spend those bond proceeds down, those are funds that are added to the capital, to the capital budget funds. And then on the proprietary funds, uh, we have the Waveney Pool Fund, which is the primary um, fund in this segment, operational fund. So that's over at uh, just over a million dollars. The Town Health Internal Service Fund, this is the number that we, we look at closely during the budget, that is at 906. And then the Board of Health Internal Service Fund, that has grown to, um, to 5.9. If you recall at the last meeting, um, Dr. Keating presented that they did have a slowdown in their um, health expenses in that internal service fund and therefore almost $2 million underspend in that fund. Uh, they anticipate that some of those funds will get, some of those expenses will pick up in this fiscal year as people begin um, to, resume, to resume their medical, their medical care. Um, and so that's really kind of where we are on the financials. You will receive uh, the big budget, the big audit book uh, once you have it with all of the schedule and the state plans and the formal opinion. Uh, but, you know, this is a really good, uh, it was a really good audit. I'll let Chuck speak more more to that, uh, but there's a lot of work on the finance staff. And so our, our controller is Joanne Noon. Um, she's the primary custodian of these activities. She does a great job. We work together with the Board of Ed on this um, and obviously uh, the audit committee and, and you, the Board of Finance, for ensuring that um, everything is done in accordance uh, to that. And with that, I'll toss it to Chuck or answer any questions if there are on, on the audit itself. Um, yeah. well, well, Chuck, why don't you go ahead and jump in and then we'll have questions. Okay. Yeah, very, very quickly from, from an audit committee point of view, um, we had about uh, five meetings throughout the year, the last three in October, November, December, spending a lot of time working with uh, Linda Joe from the uh, audit side and uh, Joanne from the education side. Um, first of all, I just like to thank everybody, them and Kevin for the cooperation. Uh, I think uh, I think there's a, a really good uh, group, group of people working on this. Um, from our point of view, I think the main things we were looking for was for, because a lot of things were done remotely um, from an audit perspective and also from a lot of the accounting perspective from basically March um, to, to, to focus on the controls and the audit procedures. Uh, just to make sure that it, that it appeared that it was as everybody was working remotely. Uh, um, another, another aspect that was kind of important mid-year, as, as you well know, is the tax collections. Um, and then from a financial statement point of view, we, we spent a lot of time going through that, going back and forth with Linda and, um, and, and resolving all any questions that we had uh, satisfactorily. And in our meeting um, last week, we recommended that uh, the town council accept and, and approve the financial statements for filing. Okay. So that's about all, all I think I wanted to add. Linda, you mentioned the um, the debt uh, balance was 107 as of June 30th. What is it today? Or November 30th? You know? Uh, I have to see. I don't know off the top of my head um, how much we've paid in principal. We have a big principal payment that we make in September. Um, it may have gone down about five million or so. That's what I, I thought. Can, I, I was going to say 102, yes. but I couldn't remember how big that payment right. was. Okay. Yep. All right. Any questions for Chuck? Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate that. Uh, or for Linda? Chuck, or anybody have their hand up? I've got the presentation up. So. Okay. I'll assume no. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, over to uh, number seven on our agenda, the budget guidance discussion. Uh, just a couple, maybe just an update. As you know, we have 
town guidance uh, that we gave Kevin of uh, between one and a half and 2%. Um, we wrote a summary of the overall vision and strategy for, for guidance. And, and uh, we, as, we, as you know from, our, from a prior meeting, we are working with the Board of Ed to really rethink the budget process with the Board of Ed and put together guidance uh, together with them as we speak. So that piece of it's probably gone a little more slowly than expected, uh, really largely due to the, just the full out work that they're doing, keeping the schools open and, and everything else. So I don't know, George or Michael, if you wanna give a quick update on, on that piece. The last piece we haven't really discussed is capital. And uh, I think as everybody also knows, just with COVID, we've kind of tapped the brakes on uh, capital and decisions until, um, until right now, frankly, uh, going into January. So we'll be picking that up um, in, in our next meeting. But anything, uh, Chris or, or, or uh, George or uh, Michael on um, the Board of Ed meeting? Well, I know, I know that, uh, I mean, we have, uh, I can't remember now exactly the date later on this month, uh, I think maybe the 18th with Katrina and Dr. Keating. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to be uh, sitting in while they hear the, the first presentations from each of their uh, budgeting units. Uh, so that should give us at least some insight. It's, it's, it's frustrating that we're, we're behind where we want to be, but it's it's difficult not to understand that the, yeah. that the Board of Ed and the school admin are, they have a pretty full plate right now. So we have to be a little bit more understanding. I think that's right. Yeah. Questions? Still a work in process. And uh, it's, it's uh, with the town sort of set, we've got capital to wrestle with. And I think together we'll figure the Board of Ed uh, numbers out. Uh, but to, to Michael and, and George's point, they're just flat out um, and running their running the schools. So uh, we're, we're we're backing off on forcing that as a priority right now. Okay, all right, fair enough. Okay, Linda, you want to roll over to number eight on our financial update? Uh, sure. So you do have the financials um, in front of you, and I just wanted to kind of highlight a couple of things on here. Um, overall, our revenues are where we would uh, we anticipated them to be. We're at a little over half of our total revenue collections. We do have a couple of revenue items, as we've discussed before, primarily our, our parking revenues um, because of um, of COVID and and, and not enforcing parking and suspending the parking permits. We're slightly, we are not slightly, we're rather below um, on where those would, would be relative relative to budget. But we do have a couple of revenue items that are making up for that loss. So we've talked about the conveyance fees. Conveyance fees right now is at 1.1 million on a $1 million um, initial budget. So that's uh, 600,000 over. And then our back taxes um, are also ahead of um, of where they were this time last year, um, and our building permits are also trending ahead this year compared to this time last year. Uh, so overall, our revenue picture is um, is good. Our expenditures um, continue to follow our our usual trend. Overall, we're at just over 37 percent of overall expenditures townwide. Uh, the biggest one here that um, out of the norm is obviously we have this, the $1.5 million that we did for, uh, for the Board of Ed. Um, so that is also included. We've already accounted for that within that, um, that 37%. But other than those, other than that um, outlier in, in expenditures, most of our other expenditures are, are consistent with where we would be. I did highlight these two expenditures that we didn't have. Uh, we we have COVID related expenditures and I'll update where we are with reimbursements. Um, year to date um, on COVID, we are at, on the town side, we're at 185,000 in COVID. Um, and we were tracking expenses separately. We weren't sure if if FEMA was going to reimburse us for that, but we did track the um, Isaias, um storm expenses and those have actually exceeded our COVID expenses, so we're at 210, and therefore we're not sure if there's going to, I doubt, I haven't heard any reimbursements uh, for those, so that was a, a big unbudgeted expense in this year's budget, and hopefully by the end of the year, we'll be able to make up for that in, in, from 
underspend in some of these other line items. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any other questions before I jump to the next um, item Linda, on, the, on the financials. The, the, um, all those expenses that were reimbursed to the district and any of the other costs that we've had, have any of those been submitted to the state to seek reimbursement for COVID? Um, yes, actually, that's the next uh, the next topic I was going to I was going to go over. So some of those have been submitted, and and some of that revenue we have received. Linda, this is just a small item, and it's just the the bit of the offset on the parking that you know the expenses are year to date down, uh, which kind of makes sense. But is that uh, just less staff, or I'm just curious, what, you know, what is it down thirty something percent? Um, I'm just wondering what those are. Yes. On the parking side, it is it is staff. Uh, they are down one uh, one employee. Uh, that person we have parks in a parking employee that moved to fill a vacancy in public works, okay. and the parking department is not filling that position, and therefore they're going to be a position less um, for the end of the year. So we anticipate some additional savings on that just from that person. All right. Thank you. Linda, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear on your answer to Maria's question. So do we have COVID expenses that have been uh, both submitted and is something reimbursed? We have fiscal year 20 COVID expenses. And here, let me go into that next slide here. Uh, here we go. So for fiscal year, for fiscal year, I'll start with fiscal year 20, then I'll get into fiscal year 21 COVID expenses. So in fiscal year 20, we submitted, initially the state asked us to, to, to tell them how much we thought we would spend between the town and the Board of Ed. And at the time we, we had calculated we'd be at about 450,000 or so, I think. Uh, is, is what the state is what the state reported when we closed out the year and we actually tallied our COVID expenses we were at 471,000 between the town and the Board of Ed fiscal year 20. So of these um, as we went through the process uh, we we were we were given instructions on how to apply for reimbursements basically these these 471 worth of expenses were grouped into three categories. The, the first category, which is probably the easiest, were expenses that we could submit directly to the state. So of this 470,000, we had 202,000 that we submitted directly to the state through the funds that the state had received for the Corona Relief Fund. The other group of expenses, uh, we were instructed that these needed to go to FEMA first, and then FEMA would reimburse us 70, whatever FEMA approves, we would get 75% reimbursed by FEMA, and then the balance, the 25%, we should then go back to the state and request for, uh, for additional reimbursement. Um, ideally, this then this is the 25% bucket here, the total 67,000. At the time we submitted these expenses, we had not yet heard from FEMA on the outcome of, our, of this request here. So the state said, until you hear from FEMA, do not submit any of those additional requests. So at this particular time, we're waiting for FEMA to tell us the, the outcome of these two requests here, the 75%, and the 25%. So once we hear from FEMA, if they approve everything that we submitted to them, they'll give us 201,000 and then 67,000 we can turn in um, up into the state um, for approval. Now, these were instructions that were given to us prior to, to the year beginning. Since then, the state has kind of changed the rules and has said, well, you know, we're going to do the second round differently we're going to allocate these funds on a per capita basis versus on a direct cost basis. And so they haven't yet given the guidance, uh, the, the templates for how to submit, but our current understanding is if, for example, FEMA was to approve all of this funding, 
we would then have to include this 67,000 not reimbursed by FEMA plus any additional FY21 expenses which include the 1.9 million that, uh, is, that was uh, appropriated for the Board of Ed, plus any additional town expenses. So to date on the town side, we have not yet, there hasn't been an opportunity to submit any of the fiscal year 21 items for inverse. We're still waiting for that process. The Board of Ed side is somewhat different because the Board of Ed, um, the, the state um, set aside some grant funds that the Board of Ed could apply for. And so the Board of Ed has submitted some FY21 expenses for reimbursement. But when I spoke to, um, to Dr. Keating, none of those include the $1.9 million that was, um, that was appropriated. So those are other pots of money, well, other, other expenses. It's how the programs are, um, are administered and the type of expenses that you could submit to those for those expenses. And that's why they haven't tapped that yet. So both on the, the, the Board of Ed side and the town side, we don't really have a process to submit these claims. Not yet. Um, on the state side, they were waiting to finish up the FY20, which they, the deadline was November 30th. They've issued you know, the memo saying that it was going to be on a per capita basis, but they said that they'll give us additional inf instructions on what dollar amount is being divided on a per capita. That they haven't told us yet. And have they given you a time frame for when we'll have a process to submit the, these 21 figures? No, the, they sent the memo came out just before Thanksgiving, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and then they said in a, in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, and so we're still waiting to that. So, but they didn't give us a date. Okay, so we should have an update for January. Hopefully, yes. Okay. Okay, questions for Linda? Linda, anything else you want to cover on the financials? I didn't mean to jump around on you, but I wanted to get to that. Um, Todd. Yeah, go ahead, Judy. Yeah, um, Linda, this is federal money, and is this a is this a bureaucratic problem of distribution, or is there as a calculus here that is being um, reset or not defined as yet? Which is it? Because this should this has never happened. It shouldn't happen. I'm not aware that it could happen. What, what's holding it up? Um, I, I honestly don't know. I know on the, and, and Bill, Bill Osman on, our t on the town side is the person that's coordinating this. He has been in touch with, with our FEMA, with our FEMA uh, agent, so to speak. Um, initially, the, the back and forth was between, you know, this item is eligible, this is not eligible, explain to me what this was. So there's been that back and forth. Um, but beyond that, I, I don't know, to be honest, what the delay is on, on this. Um, maybe Kevin, you may know more. I know you've been in touch uh, with folks. At the yeah, time. Judy, I would just make the comment that uh, when back in, the, in May, Rudy Marconi and Ridgefield said, oh my God, they're gonna make us go through FEMA. Now they're trying to maximize federal dollars because FEMA has certain things they can pay for. But the FEMA process is like root canal surgery. It's just, they, they nickel to dime you to death. Um, but the state did get $1.38 billion of CARES Act fund back in April, and they haven't uh, given any to any cities or towns yet, other than in, in different kinds of grants. You notice the other day they issued $43 million in, in uh, computers to, for education purposes. And they've, they've done, uh, you know, we've gotten actually $29,000 for our health department. The Board of Ed got a $90,000 grant um, in the spring. So they're distributed, and I, to some extent, and it's probably appropriate that they are focusing more money on the cities than the towns, because there's greater need in the towns. So I'm um, in the cities. So it's 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 bit, it's somewhat arbitrary at this point. No, it's just that they they um, they're trying to maximize the federal dollars they can get out, not only the CARES Act right. funds, but also the FEMA. FEMA is a separate source of federal funds, but they're much more. For, troublesome and bureaucratic in terms of how they go about uh, uh, scrutinizing your expenses and uh, then ultimately, but, but we're not any different than the other cities and towns around us. No one's really, I think, I think, uh, wasn't well, there was an indication we're gonna get a, a $195,000, um, Linda, which represents 73% of our FY20 claims? Yes. Um, so actually we did, of this 202 that we, that we submitted, 
we did receive 195,000. And so they kicked out about 7,000 7, or so from this 202,000. Right. And they have to disperse. All the CARES Act funds have to be committed or, or spent by December 31 by the state. Yeah. We'll say that I have read that, that there was supposed to be philosophically that the money that was given to the states was supposed to be allocated to the towns. Well, I think I think by law, 15% has to be given to the municipalities. Massachusetts immediately gave money to their towns and cities back in the back in April when they got the federal dollar. So, and and the, and the second round for the fiscal year 21 expenses, my understanding is it's going to be per capita like $25. Per, per capita, which be, would be like a half million dollars for us. Good, good. Better than nothing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better than little. nothing, but but substantially less than what we've, we would have yeah. spent because that's half a million on almost two and a half million that we'll be spending. That's right. Okay, other questions for Linda? Linda, anything else you wanted to cover? Uh, no, just a follow up. I know last time you wanted to you you had a question about how much uh, Claudia had spent um, in elections related expenses. So she did provide this informational um, sheet. And so overall, town clerk spent about thirty five thousand dollars on um, additional expenses as a result of, of COVID. Um, Eighteen thousand was just through the normal course of business okay. for a total election expense of fifty three. So that's okay. just um Okay. Well, the 35, I think, is less than she thought she would have in September or October when she came, if I recall. So we go yes. back and look at the minutes. So that's pretty good. And it was a very well-run process, too. So. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, follow-ups from the board? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Sure. Uh, the, just the next item. Um, in your on your tablets is a um, is a 2021 meeting schedule. If you could just look at that, we do need to um, we do need to approve and vote on that. I, I will say right now we've taken the normal uh, Tuesday meeting time slot for every month except August plus our I would say our historical schedule for February for the budget. I, I would ask that you just approve that. We, we, we may try to trim back the, the meetings on the 9th and the 11th and the 23rd and the 25th. Um, TBD, partly Board of Ed driven, partly just uh, where are we with, uh, with the rest of the departments and other things that we need to do. But, but let's hold those spots and those times to keep it published in public. And then if we, if we change something, we can do so accordingly. Tucker, anything else we need to, uh, to do other than to uh, have a motion to approve it? Yeah, just if we can get it approved, that's all we need to okay. do. Just a motion to approve the meeting schedule for 21. Judy, um, second. Second, George. Okay, thank you. All in favor of approving the meeting schedule? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None? Okay, thanks everybody. Appreciate that. Okay, uh, subcommittee assignments. So in the, in your, on your tablets, um, we have the, um, the current um, town council and board of finance assignments. I did get some feedback from some of you and I just, I would ask um, if we just want to take it uh, quickly go through and if there are any questions or, or, or things people might want to change or follow up on, we can do that um, offline. I'd like to get this done and approved tonight, but if, 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 we, if we don't have everything filled in or we have some other work to do, we can, we can always uh, postpone it, not move it and do it in January. But on the, on um, starting with, I guess, education. Kevin, we're not required on bylaws and ordinances. We don't have a role there, I don't believe. This is the same um, schedule that we've used for the past few years. Yeah, I don't think that could, you could confirm that with me, but I don't believe there's a... Okay. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm asking, more I'm asking than uh, not. It's, uh, I don't I think we've, we, so haven't filled that, we haven't filled that committee since I've been the chair, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, we, we never did prior in my experience either, Todd. Yeah, I, I didn't think so. Okay, so let's pass on that. But just Tucker, if you could get back to me and confirm. I will. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're good on that. On, on education, um, right now, uh, uh, George and, and Maria um, have, been the, um, have been the main members. Others have come in and out, Michael Chen um, and, and, uh, and Chris, of course, um, and as well as, uh, as, well as Judy. 
Um, is anybody feeling like they'd like to be on this? And George, I, I, do you do you want to continue next year, or are you ready to retire from that committee? I, I mean, if I would be happy to bow out if someone else has a passion to uh, to take my place, but if not, I'll be happy to stay on for another year. Okay, well, let me ask because it'd be nice to to add someone if they wanted to be on it. Yes, I I, I actually think that three people for the part of the budget, which yeah. is almost two thirds of all the money we spend, maybe we, it would be good if we could have another. It really needs to have I. another person. And I'll tell you why, because you, you have me, but I, I can't be overcommitted on that one. Um, I have to stay involved with it, of course, but I, I'd really appreciate if someone else would volunteer. Let's leave George on. And if someone else would like to volunteer, we'll put their hand up. So, uh, no, it's not that bad. So, Todd, um, since you have uh, uh, George and Michael uh, working, uh, getting into the details yeah. with the on the budget side, and, and I'm kind of uh, backing them up on that, um, it, it might make sense to keep that team together. Yeah, Michael. So that there's some consistency between uh, oversight and... Um, it's just like the library where Neil, Neil and I sit on the building committee, but we're also the liaisons to, uh, to the library for budget purposes. Uh, well, and, and remember, we also had four people on uh, public works uh, before, and now that Bob's gone. Um, we're also going to have Victor Alvarez will be a new member um, as of your next meeting. He gets confirmed at the town council next week. Yeah. Make a suggestion. Um, if if Michael, you are okay with this, and Chris, I'd like one of you should be an alternate because we also don't want to have a quorum. <laughs> I'm not sure we can have a quorum uh, in that meeting uh, if for uh, for certain reasons. If you got half the town council there as well, more. I'm I'm fine with whatever. Yeah, me too. Whatever you decide. Okay, let's put both Michael and Chris on. And, and, and then I think Maria and George, that provides plenty of support because not everybody can make every meeting. And I like that. Um, and, and that way I know we've got it covered um, and no one person's carrying all the, all the water. All right, if you guys are good with that, let's add Michael and Chris to that then. On um, general government, let's see, we've had Neil and Judy. Yeah, I'm good. You good, Neil? Is that something you want to continue doing? Do we want to add uh, anybody else? Want to take that, Neil? You look like you want to keep it. Don't want to keep. You're on mute. <laughs> Still on mute. <laughs> Famous words. Sorry, sorry. No, I'm happy to do it again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, great. On and on the library now, Neil and Chris. Um, I don't want to, we, we can spread the wealth here. Uh, I think we need to keep that the way it is, uh, especially okay. now at the, in the middle of this building project. Yep. Okay. Uh, we, we need to keep a close eye on what they're doing and. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Continuity, continuity makes sense. I'm okay with that. On, on infrastructure utilities, um, Amy, is that something you're interested yeah. in doing? So yeah, Chris, I really could like I ask, maybe I could I ask Chris yeah. to. Have Amy take your position there. You've got the library. You've got education. Are you okay with that? Well, you could yeah. just have a you could have a replace Bob Spangler. Well, yeah, I, I want to hold off on. I hear you, but there's there's a, going to be a new member appointed, and mm -hmm. and we might want to think about that member uh, for for some of these positions as well, George. I just want to hold off and 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 see if there's some interest on, on the potential for the Bob Spangler replacement. And I'm not yeah, sure who that's Yeah, I'm for. okay with that permutation if that's okay. What you so want to let's do. have Amy. I like that too. That's great. Amy, you're good. You're right. You're good. Yeah, no, I'd like to do that. That'd be great. Okay. So Amy replaces Chris. And Tom, you're still good there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good with infrastructure. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Bye bye, Tiger. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry. To... <laughs> Tiger, no, did Tom, you want to I... vote? I'm sorry, I Tiger want to vote sure. on? <laughs> Tiger might want to vote. As I would love to vote. stack the deck, but yeah, it's okay. Tiger <laughs> muted his video all of a sudden, suddenly. We don't know why, what facial expression he was trying to make. All right. Um, so I just want to make sure.
Amy, you went, or Tucker, sorry, you went on mute. You're on mute. Amy, um, Judy, and Tom for emphasis. And, and TBD. Okay, yep, and TBD. Got it. Now, land use, if this is Tom, Michael, and Amy, again, um, it's, a, it's a great team, but I feel like we're, we, we're, we're taxing. Um, I don't know if, if that's yeah, something. Yeah, Todd, I, I was on education for a number of years and I swapped out intentionally because I felt somebody else should get in there. So, and then I, I've only been with Tom and Michael for a year on the rec and land use. So. I'm fine keeping it. It's, if you guys are still good, I'm seeing head nodding. Okay. Yep. Okay. All, good. All right. Okay. And then. Um, do, do we not do a health and human service person? I mean, I know it's not an enormous budget. It certainly was a bigger job this year than most years. Do, do we don't have anybody there? Is, is that kind of our approach? Just ask him. I I, Amy, I think my experience was, I think we, just in the triage of which ones we could manage, we never saw fit to put a team together. That doesn't mean we couldn't. Yeah, but I mean, I remember that relative to the rest of the, the budget items, it's a small, super small one, you know, so this year being the aberration in terms of uh, all the stuff they had to do. Yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. But this seems like an awful lot of people on town council, <laughs> six people, so. It perhaps should be on the general government. Yeah. Say again, Kevin? Human services perhaps should be uh, general government. Yeah, you could roll it in there, right? Yeah, I think that makes sense. That'd be efficient. It's a good idea. Okay. Was... That's the way it's being managed, really. Okay. All right. And then the last one, public safety. We still have George, Michael, and Bob. Bob, you're still good there, Michael? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's right. one other one. Uh, Todd is the one we just were on today, which is Neil, myself, George, oh. on uh, the pension and retirement. Yeah. The RPAC, yep. The RPAC. We should add that because that's a that's a commitment. Absolutely. Why isn't that on the? Well, I don't, they don't don't have a budget. It's not really right. I yeah. suppose that's right. Have it as a record that that that's yeah. who's on the committee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. I mean, right. If you want to put down Michael, me, George, and Neil, that's yeah. Yep. That's okay. Right. That's it. That's it, Tucker. And I I understand it's not a budget. It's just a, a, obviously it's an important spot for us to have a, from a fiduciary point of view to have representation. Okay, great. Got it. That's, that's excellent. All right. Anything else? Well, if that's it, then you know what, if you don't mind, Tucker, not to torture you, but could you just review the bidding and just review each one of those so that we can have a motion to vote? Yes. So on education, I have Blauvelt, Lavieri, Weingarten, Chen, and Labrie. Yep. General government, Budnick and, and Neville. Um, library, Budnick and Labrie. Human Services is gonna become general government combined, uh, Neil and Judy. Uh, infrastructure, Amy, Neville, Schulte, and we have uh, an opening there. Land use, Carol, Chen, yeah. Schulte. Uh, public safety, Blauvelt, Chen, Hamill. Yes. And then we're gonna make note that Chen, uh, Blauvelt, Schulte, and Budnick are on the RPAC committee. That sound right? That sounds right, okay. Okay, uh, motion to approve all of those appointments for the liaison committees. Uh, Judy, thank you. Second, Chris. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Not Tiger, you don't get a vote on the opposed. So, okay, great, kidding. All right, great, thank you. So moved, motion's moved. Very good, thanks everybody. And thanks for your all your support in advance. I know there's a lot of work through in between the meetings to get all that work done. Okay, so we've got some line items to review and approve, Linda. Uh, yes. Um... These are all for approve for review. I don't have any uh, for approval. Um, and so they're just movements between accounts. Uh, the one, the last one on that list that um, I guess kind of wanted to bring up is the 18,000 transfer from emergency management department to land use. This is um, for a document imaging contract that land use had. Uh, for imaging of, of land use documents. It's a software that we actually never used. And therefore, we reached out to the company to say that, you know, we, we're not using it. We want to cancel this contract um, before the term ends. And therefore, 18000 is the, the, the amount to cancel, to cancel that contract. The transfer is from emergency management. You'll recall that at the beginning, not at the beginning, but when we approved this year's budget, 
we had um, at the time we didn't know what the uh, software licensing for the uh, what's the name of that software? Mm. It was uh, the public safety. Uh, I think it was the emergency radio um, software. Oh, uh, and, yeah, maybe a Motorola contract or something. Yes, that's what it was. And therefore, we still had 179000 on there, knowing that we it was going to go down once we negotiated. Um, and therefore, we don't anticipate spending 179000 on that contract. And therefore, we're transferring 18000 from that to land use so we can pay it out of the land use budget. And then any unspent funds will remain in the emergency management and we'll just um, realize those savings at the end of the year. So when does the term end? What, what, what are we buying out? How many years or? We had, I believe we have two more years left. And, and why did it- was a five-year contract and this is year three. Was it just a bad purchase or a mistake or what, when are we going back to? <laughs> um, it, it, from, from what I understand, it was actually not a bad purchase. Uh, it was just this, it, uh, this was something that Steve Kleppen, when he was here, was something that he, he thought would be a good uh, a good tool. And then when he left, um, none of the existing staff used that tool, All and right. therefore we've just been paying for it. And we decided they decided to, to go ahead and okay. Well, good move to terminate it. Let's get out of it and obviously not renew it. Okay. Well, any other items you want to call out? Um, no, not at this time. Okay. Any questions for Linda on the transfers? Kevin, anything else on that? No, you're good. No. Okay. Okay, and so there are no approvals. No approvals. Okay. Okay, I think that is a wrap. Thank you, everyone. Unless there's any other business, we can uh, have a motion to adjourn. Need a motion. Uh, Judy, the motion, yes, second. Tom Schulte, thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, all in favor? I oppose none. And congratulations. Have, have a fabulous holiday, uh, everybody, and a happy new year. Um, we've got quite a busy January, February in front of us. So thank you again for everything following Kevin's comments. A lot of work this year, a lot of work we didn't expect, but you guys did an amazing job. Um, and we've got some good results to show for it. So thank you, Linda, as always. Uh, really fantastic job this year. Thank yeah. you. And a great audit, by the way, and a, and a, and a financial award. So that's a great, really terrific, uh, terrific year. Happy okay. Holidays. If there's nothing else, Tucker, Kevin, then we'll call it a wrap. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Stay Thank safe. you. Thanks, Thanks. all. Bye.